chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about why your bench press is asymmetrical. So as you guys know, I didn't really have access to barbells for six months because of everything being closed down until I got my home gym. And when I started back up working out in my home gym, I recorded my bench press sets. And as you can see, uh, that bar is not straight. In fact, that bar is tilting at a pretty significant level. And again, I say this all the time, guys, you have to record your sets so you can know this. If you never record your sets, you have a lot of things going on you probably don't know about, okay? But why is the bar tilting? I can't totally pinpoint again. I can't see your exact situation, but for most guys, it's going to be an issue of chest imbalance, upper back or trap imbalance, or something involving the shoulder. Now, it could be a combination, it could be one, it could be any of those things, but this video is going to cover how to fix all of them. Now, before we go into this, make sure you're getting the basics down, okay? If you guys want to go over chest training mistakes in general, check the pinned comment. I'm going to put my old video about chest training mistakes there. But whenever you do a bench press, guys, make sure you have the fundamentals down, okay? Scapula tight, dig your shoulder blades into the bench, make sure you're not swaying, make sure you're not tapping your feet like happy feet, not dancing around, and make sure your elbows aren't totally flaring out to the side, right? I'm gonna assume that's down. So if that is down for you, if this is a problem, make sure you're checking off that list, the basic chest training list. Once those are out of the way though, and you still have that problem, well, my friend, you have an imbalance. So let's go into how to fix it right now. So let's begin with some quick cosmetic fixes. These probably aren't going to solve the entire issue, but depending on your biomechanics, they might. Now, most people are going to have one arm that is a little bit longer than the other. My left arm, if I hold them out, it's a little bit longer than the right. Now, that isn't going to make a huge difference most likely, but what you can do is a test run is just kind of, you know, inch out that one longer arm to the side a little bit more. That might fix it. I've done that myself. I still had the same problem. So that's worth a shot, I would say, but again, it's not going to guarantee any fixes. Another thing to consider is gripping the bar itself. Now, a common cue here is going to be like, think about bending or squeezing the bar. I also would say whenever you take the bar out, you want to make sure your arms are totally locked out, guys. I know there's a point to be made for constant tension, but if you are always not locked out right, your shorter arm or your weaker arm is most likely going to bend or tilt down a little bit. I've noticed this for myself. Sometimes I have my safeties up pretty high. If I lower the bar, it'll start hitting on the right side more so than the left. So now this is when we go into direct muscle work for balancing itself. So the first area we're going to focus on is the arm. So if the bar tilts down to the right side for you, that means that the right side of your body or your right arm is lagging behind the left. So how we're going to kind of replicate this system is get a band. We're going to attach it to a wall, a squat rack, a, a bar, anything you can mount the band to, and we're going to do arm band holds. Now the one I have here is relatively heavy. I think you're going to get more out of this if you use a heavier band, something that's like 40 to 80 pounds, depending. If you have a really light band that's only five or 10 pounds, it's probably not gonna do much here. So if you need to get a heavier band, but once you have that, just post it up and then you're going to probably for 30 to 60 seconds at a time, just hold your arms straight. So put your arm in the band, and then as you can see, the band is going to pull that way against the squat rack. So that simulates the same weight of the bench press when it wants to sway off path and tilt to that side, okay? So hold your arm out, really keep it flexed here. Again, I've told you guys, right side is my weaker side. I've noticed that I tend to have a hard time keeping my right elbow locked out when bench pressing. But make sure you're keeping your arms straight, and as that band tries to pull you to the other side, you're going to fight that resistance that's going to work on your arm strength, your grip, it's going to activate your trap on that side too, so that's going to help you stabilize the weight. So next we're going to go into the dumbbell Y raise. So a lot of times guys, if you notice that your arms are shifting during the bench press, or if you kind of have like, you know, this kind of bar path where you're kind of shifting to one side, most likely you have a trap imbalance or one of your traps is weaker. Whenever we talk about traps, especially, you know, YouTube fitness, the rack pulls and everything, we tend to talk about just the visible part of the traps from the front right, like the big part, like when you deadlift right. But the middle and lower traps, kind of down your back more, they play a huge part in stabilizing your body when doing bench presses. So just grab a light pair of dumbbells. And again, guys, the lighter the better. I can barely even do this with five pounds. Okay, so don't be that guy who's like, oh, I'm gonna do my warm ups to 20 pounds because I can't use anything low. Get your ego out of the equation. Do something really light. And we're going to do a two to one ratio. So on your weaker side, let's say that the bar shifts down to the right when you bench press. We're going to do both sides at a time. 
lower them back down, then we're only going to do the right side. So in this way, we're going to warm up both traps at the same time, but we're going to specifically focus on the weaker side. Now the trick here is going to be to keep your shoulders down and back. I do these on a bench because if you do these just standing or kind of tilted over or hip hinged, it's much easier to cheat and kind of shift your hips when doing it. When you do this on a bench, like 30 degrees, 45 degrees, it really takes out that cheating aspect that forces you to only use the traps. So be sure to incorporate these guys, same as the band holds, three to five sets, 30 to 60 seconds, nothing too crazy, but you really want to feel your traps, especially on the weaker side firing. So we've targeted the arm, we've targeted the traps, now we're going to finish up with the chest and the pecs themselves. So we're going to do some band flies here. Now whenever I say fly guys, we're not going to do like crazy, right, like all the way back type of thing. We're not going to do like a crucifix or a pec deck, okay? But what you want to focus on here is really with that weaker side, pushing through with your chest. is simulate locking out a bench press. So really drive through that pec, Make sure you're locking out at the top, really pressing through the elbow, squeeze that chest, bring it back down, and then press through. Now I like to hook this up probably chest width, shoulder width. I don't like to go too low because when you think about a bench press, guys, you're really pressing it. It's more of your upper body. Nobody's really bench pressing from their stomach region, right? Unless you're like a power lifter with a crazy archer grip or something, but that's not most people. It kind of pre-exhausts, not pre-exhausts exactly, but it activates and fires your chest. And again, if you have tight traps or if you're hunched over right, a lot of people have weak pecs because of their posture, they sit all day, this is going to help that too. Same as the other movements, guys. Keep it simple, three to five sets, half a minute to a minute. That's all you should need. Now, if you do these, right, you're not just gonna be able to do these all in one day. And then, oh, my bench press is magically even again. But if you can incorporate these, start getting a better mind-muscle connection on the weaker side, bring up those muscles a little bit, I've done this myself for only two or three weeks and I'm already seeing improvements in my bench press, okay? So it's gonna take a few weeks, maybe a few months if you're really bad with the shifting, but it can be fixed. So focus on these movements, guys. I hope this has been helpful. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, any comments you have or say anything to help the algorithm. Thank you for watching and I will catch you guys next time.